What is up, guys? Happy Monday. Hope everyone's doing well. We're going to be going over the week nine post game notes in this video. And uh, if you guys are a member of the Fantasy Fellowship already, this is uh, this is one of the, the the membership exclusive articles on there. If you guys are new to the Fantasy Fellowship, you guys can check it out. Become a, mem a member. It's only eight dollars a month. You can do a couple other options there for you. But we'll review a few of the, uh, the notes here. We'll put those on YouTube and then I'll have the full video up for members on the website. And we're just going to hop right into it. The post game notes. I log the snaps, the routes, and then all the fantasy data that we need to care about. And then we're just going to review it here. I'll cover maybe four or five games for free, and then we'll uh, we'll lock up the video for the rest. Uh, but anyways, Thursday night football, Jets and Texans, Jets 21, Texans 13. Texans really shorthanded here without Nico Collins, without Stephon Diggs. Uh, we'll start with the Jets side first. Uh, nothing too crazy here on the Jets end. Uh, Aaron Rodgers. Played fine, 211 yards, three touchdowns, minus one yards rushing. He hits 20 fantasy points, though, so he's becoming a guy that could be a fringe QB1. There's a lot of bye weeks coming up. Maybe we look at Aaron Rodgers uh, for bye week spot starts, that kind of thing. Brees Hall led the way, 15 for 74 on the ground. Dominated the snaps and the routes again. 44 snaps to Braylon Allen, 17. Braylon Allen, not really a guy that I want to trust in my fantasy lineups. He's like a desperation touchdown play here, and ever since the... The, the firing of Robert, Robert Sala and just the play calling and things have changed a little bit. We're seeing a lot more Brees than we did the first, I don't know, six games or so. Uh, at tight end, Tyler Conklin's still the main tight end here, but nothing really happening here for him. He led the way with 27 routes. Jeremy Ruckert getting eight, eight routes. Don't really want to start a Jets tight end. And then at the receiver position, still heavy three wide receivers here. Garrett Wilson running the most routes with 34. Devontae Adams left uh, briefly in the second half. I think he was getting looked at for concussion. He did come back to ice the game with that game winning touchdown. Uh, but both receivers, man, they're kind of like both fringe wide receiver ones right now. I feel very strongly about them both being wide receiver twos going forward. And the majority of the passing game is to Garrett Wilson and Devontae Adams. You can see 32 passing attempts, 10 targets for Wilson, 11 for Adams. Wilson with that insane Michael Jordan, uh, Air Jordan type catch and catching all three touchdowns between the two of them. So Wilson, Adams, Brees are in your starting lineups. Maybe consider Aaron Rodgers if you need a quarterback. On the Texan side of things, uh, Joe Mixon continues to be the whole engine of this offense. He, he played the majority of the game, 24 carries, 106 yards and a touchdown. They did give a couple carries to Ogun Bawale, a few to, to J.J. Taylor, but nothing taking away from Mixon really. Mixon still led the way with 45 snaps. 13 routes. They do use Ogun Bawale in third down passing situations. You can see the three targets here, 22 routes run. So he's the kind of the emergency third down two minute offensive back. Uh, otherwise, JJ Taylor filled in for Damian Pierce down here at tight end. It's heavily Dalton Schultz, 56 snaps out of 79, 34 routes out of 56, only three for 21 though. So a bit disappointing here. I thought with Diggs and Nico done or not in this game, I thought Schultz would have a better role. Nothing really changed for him, though. He's kind of just a frustrating tight end, too. He's not even in the top 10, top 12 tight end discussion. Uh, and then at receiver, only two receivers caught passes. Tank Dell, if he started Tank Dell, six for 126, 40 routes out of 56. He was the lead receiver in this one. Uh, we we got to see if Nico Collins is back week 10. We might get one more game here with Tank Dell being the lead receiver. Uh, but as long as... Stefan Diggs is out. I, I mean, and he's out for the year. I, I think we're probably looking at Tank Dell as like a must start wide receiver three going forward. And if Nico is out one more game, Dell is a wide receiver two in my book here. But we're not starting Hutchinson, who ran 32 routes. Mechie ran 30 routes. Robert Woods was the only guy that caught a pass other than Tank Dell at receiver. Uh, but we're just not starting any of these other Texans players. So Tank Dell, Nico when he's in. Maybe Dalton Schultz in the deepest of tight end spots. And then you're starting Joe Mixon, man. That looks pretty good. And as of right now, man, I'm kind of nervous to start CJ Stroud. I don't really want anything to do with this in a 10 or 12 man quarterback league. 191 yards, eight carries for 59 yards was nice. It was nice to see him run the ball, but the passing game is just not there. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'm willing to change my mind when we get Nico back and rolling. But I think for week 10, I'm going to probably be, I'd rather start Aaron Rodgers week 10, I think over, CJ Stroud right now. So he's just not a top 10, top 12 QB for me. We'll move on to the Falcons and the Cowboys. We did learn that Dak Prescott's got a bad hamstring pull. He's going to miss week 10. They've already ruled him out for week 10. And we should see if he goes on IR yet. There's going to be more news on that throughout the week. Uh, but Falcons hold on to this one, 27 to 21. Falcons look good, man. Bijan Robinson, 19 carries for 86 yards, seven for 
59 as a receiver on seven targets. Just another 20-point game, 21.5 here. He's been a PPR monster this year, and he just keeps hitting 20 points. And he didn't even score a touchdown in this one, and his usage was outstanding. So 42 snaps to Algiers 14. He also ran 18 routes to Algiers 5. He's the clear lead back by a mile here. Now, Tyler Algier did get the touchdown in this game, 6 for 18 and a touchdown. He's a desperation RB2 flex if you need someone that could score a touchdown. He's still getting some goal line work here. Uh, but it's heavy Bijan. Kirk Cousins played well, 19 of 24 passing, 222 yards, three passing touchdowns. And uh, I don't know what happened here in the rushing column, but four for minus 11. He did lose a fumble as well. Uh, Kirk, you know, I'd rather probably play Kirk Cousins over a guy like CJ Stroud right now. We know his passing pie is pretty good, uh, but we do have to wait and see what's going on with Drake London. They're saying it's a hip pointer. It's not that serious. Maybe he plays week 10. I'm going to assume he's doubtful for this week. So maybe we see Darnell Mooney, Ray Ray McLeod, and, and Kyle Pitts be the lead targets for this week. I believe they play the Saints, so that's a good matchup. If London is out, Darnell Mooney becomes a must-start wide receiver 2-3. Ray Ray McLeod becomes a wide receiver 3 flex. So if you need somebody on waiver wires, I think McLeod's an interesting name. He did catch a touchdown in this one. And he was the clear number 2 receiver once London left. Uh, Kadero Hodge did step in as the number 3 receiver. Don't know if I want to recommend starting him. You could maybe pick him up if you need somebody. But I think it's McLeod. If I'm picking up a Falcon off the waiver wire this week, it's going to be Ray Ray McLeod. And then I would expect Kyle Pitts to get back. Uh, into a better stat column next weekend. He only caught one for 11. Uh, Falcons, just, this, this game was never really in doubt. They were able to run the ball 25 times with their running backs, only threw the ball 24 times. Kirk Cousins wasn't really pressured much. This was a pretty easy going offensive day for the Falcons. Cowboys, on the other hand, I mean, Dak Prescott was struggling in this game. 18 for 24 before he left, 133 yards. He was dinking and dunking a lot. Uh, he did throw a touchdown. He ran for 30 yards, but he pulled up lame with that hamstring injury. So a bit of a disappointment there. But Cooper Rush comes in, goes 13 of 25, 115 yards and a touchdown. He could be serviceable in super flex league. So in super flex leagues, I'll put him on the waiver wire list. Uh, otherwise, Jalen Tolbert led the way. CeeDee Lamb did get hurt with this one. He had a shoulder injury. He's saying he's going to be fine. Obviously, this is going to ding his ceiling. With Cooper Rush, he becomes more of like a still a top 10, top 12 option for you, but probably not that number one, number two receiver option that we drafted here. Uh, so frustrating. CD Lamb does go eight for 47 on 12 targets, two for 15 as a rusher. He did catch a two point conversion. So 16 points is a good day for CD Lamb. Maybe that's kind of what it looks like going forward, you know, 50, 60 yards total in, in four, five, six catches, something in that 12 to 15 point range. Uh, but Tolbert, three for 19 and a touchdown. Jalen Brooks, whatever, two for 26. Fonte Turpin, three for 36. Flournoy, one for 13. Jake Ferguson was the, the lead guy here. Seven for 71 on 10 targets. Honestly, the only Cowboys I want to start week 10 would be CeeDee Lamb, Ferguson, and then I think Rico Dattle. He's the one that we should probably talk about because Ezekiel Elliott was inactive in this one for disciplinary reasons. Rico Dattle plays 55 of the 76 snaps, runs 36 of the 56 routes. He catches five for 32 and a touchdown, a great touchdown catch. And then he led the way with 12 carries for 75 yards. He is Dallas's best back. I think he's a running back too going forward. Dalvin Cook was the number two back, but they really didn't do anything with him. And Hunter Lepke remains the third down, two minute kind of change of pace back on passing situation. So Dowdle was the big winner uh, here. If he's out there in your waiver wires, he should have been picked up. But going forward, as long as Cooper Rush is the quarterback, it's just Lamb, Ferguson, Dowdle, maybe Cooper Rush in super flex leagues. Moving on to the Ravens and Broncos. I do not know what happened here. I might have missed all the stats here from this game. So I'll get that updated here. Uh, but this was a big Derrick Henry game, 23 for 106 and two touchdowns. Uh, just another day at the office for the Ravens offense. They were humming. Uh, Zay Flowers really lit this up too. He ended up going, I think, five for 111 and two touchdowns. He was the big winner in terms of the receiving column here. Let me actually pull that up. I'm sorry I didn't. Uh, I missed that one. Let's see if I can. Uh, we can talk about it here. All right. So Ravens forty-one, Broncos ten. In terms of, I guess, snaps and routes, not much to take away here. Deontay Johnson played seventeen snaps, ran six routes. There was only twenty-two dropbacks here for the Ravens. I would expect Deontay Johnson to step forward into this number three role, maybe as soon as Thursday night football happens and be that clear number three in terms of snaps and routes. So we'll watch for Deontay Johnson here. He wasn't targeted in this game. 
at all, you can see here Zay Flowers. Let me zoom, zoom, zoom. Zay Flowers was the leading guy on the day. Six targets, five for 127, and two touchdowns. He is having a fantastic year. Uh, nothing else really happened in the stat column. Mark Andrews, two for 26. Rashad Bateman, three for 25. Everything funneled to Zay Flowers in this one. So uh, Derrick Henry, Zay Flowers, those guys are in your lineups. Obviously, Lamar Jackson's in your lineup. And then I think you continue to start Mark Andrews. It looks pretty good for Mark Andrews right now. He did run 28 of 51 snaps, 12 of 22 routes. That's one of the, you know, in these games where the Ravens just romp, it's going to be a little bit tougher for them to get their routes up and get all the stats up. Uh, a game like Thursday night coming up against the Bengals, I do expect them to have to lean into the pass a little bit more here. So for Thursday night football, I'm starting Zay Flowers. I'm starting Derrick Henry, Lamar, obviously. And then I think Mark Andrews will get the nod. I don't want to start Bateman. I don't want to start Deontay Johnson yet. Let's see how it looks and see if Deontay gets more work. The Broncos. Hmm. Bo Nix can still do it, man. He can still do it. He catches a touchdown. I list him here as a receiver. He ends up with um, one catch for two yards and a touchdown pass from Cortland Sutton. He added 223 passing yards, an interception, and six for 36 as a rusher. Uh, so pretty solid day for Bo Nix here. Nothing to complain if you started him in Superflex leagues. Cortland Sutton was a tank, seven for 122. Nothing really happening at the running backs here. Javante did go two for 42 as a receiver to boost his floors. He led the way with 12 for 42. Jalou McLaughlin, you know, had a couple plays here, but five for 10 as a rusher, three for 10 as a receiver. I don't really trust. I, I think Jalou McLaughlin is just going to be a change of pace guy in his career. So I think if you're holding on to him, you can let him go. Uh, Javante, again, remains a low end RB2 start. Audric Estime got some carries at the end of the game, five for 23. They keep saying they want to get him more involved, but they don't really follow through with it. I actually dropped him in one of my leagues that I have him in redraft. If you want to hold on to him, you can. But honestly, I think for going forward, this offense is you can start Bo Nix in Superflex. You can even stream him as a QB1 in one QB leagues. I think Sutton at this point, I know he had a goose egg earlier in the year, but I think he's kind of just locked into a wide receiver three flex. I don't really trust Humphrey, Valet, Franklin, Mims. Don't want anything to do with the Broncos offense really besides Nick Sutton and Javante Williams, and keep an eye on Audric Estime, but it was just a pretty bad game from the Broncos overall. Nothing really worked for them, but Bo Nix and, and Sutton were still able to get there and have good fantasy days. The Miami Dolphins and Buffalo Bills. Buffalo wins 30-27. to This will be the last one that I cover here on the YouTube channel. If you guys want to check it out, please consider becoming a member, uh, and I can cover all the other games for you. You guys can check out all this cool stuff on the fantasyfellowship.com. But it was Josh Allen day, man. 235 yards, three passing touchdowns. He added a, a couple of rushing yards here for seven to 20 point fantasy day. They distributed the ball to a lot of players here. Keon Coleman didn't have a big game, but one for 21. Mac Hollins, five for 30 and a touchdown. Khalil Shakir, six for 50. No Amari Cooper in this one. So that allowed them to get Coleman, Hollins, and Shakir as their main receivers running the majority of the routes. Curtis Samuel was back, but again, only 12 of 41 routes, one target. Curtis Samuel is just not happening this year. I do expect Amari Cooper to play in week 10, so that'll complicate some of these things. I think going forward, I, Shakir's really the only receiver that I would say is must start. I think Amari Cooper, if he does play, he's going to slide into like a wide receiver three flex. I don't really want to play Coleman unless I have to in desperation leagues, uh, but Shakir, Cooper, Coleman is how I'd rank those guys going forward. Dalton Kincaid, you know, 32 of 41 routes is good, but only secured four of his 10 targets for 32 yards. He's a low-end tight end one right now, sharing a lot of time with Dawson Knox here. He only went one for five, though. <laughs> Quinton Morris catches the touchdown to help nobody. And then James Cook. Quiet day for James Cook. No touchdowns, but 10 for 44 as a rusher, 5 for 25 as a receiver. So you're happy in full PPR leagues. Ty Johnson was actually RB2 in this one with 11 routes, 19 snaps, 3 for 23 as a rusher. And then Ray Davis rips off a huge catch at the end of the first half, two for 70 and a touchdown adds four for 20 as a receiver. I still think Ray Davis is the primary handcuff here that you want to hold on to. And he's worth holding on to at this point of the season. So pretty good game from Buffalo. They just spread the ball out a lot and nobody like truly ate. Um, Miami Devon Achan is just unreal, man. Eight for 58 and a touchdown through the air, 12 for 63 on the ground and a touchdown. Pretty solid day, man. 32 points. He he looks like a wheat league winner back with uh, Tua Tagovailoa back in the mix here. Nothing to complain here. He dominated the snaps, by the way. 42 snaps of 61. Ran most of the routes. 26 of 30 routes. 
locked in. I think he's a top five running back rest of season. And I'll, I'm curious to see where he shakes out in my rest of season rankings on Wednesday. Raheem Mostert, 10 for 56 as a rusher. He did lose a fumble, but two for 32 as a receiver. 8.8 .8 points is fine. He's a low-end RB2 flex play with some touchdown upside. And then they still use Jalen Wright here. He did get six for 18 as a rusher. They like him running the ball. They don't really let him in on passing situations, though. When they're passing, they're going to let uh, Devon Achan be the primary receiving target. Um, in terms of receivers, Tyreek and Waddle are the main two. Again, Jonu Smith is becoming useful for super – or not for super flex, but for tight end leagues. Five for 46 from Jonu. He'll be a waiver wire tight end if you need help there. Tyreek, four for 80. He doesn't really play well against Buffalo, but I do expect him to bounce back in week 10. And then uh, Jalen Waddle, man, he had that minus 24-yard catch at the end of the game as time expired. Two for minus four and a touchdown. I'm getting nervous about Jalen Waddle. I don't think he's a must-start player at this moment. He's more of a wide receiver three flex. So going forward, Tyreek's in your lineup. Devon Achan's in your lineup. Maybe Mostert in the RB2 flex spot. Maybe John o. Smith in the tight end one spot. And then Tua, you know, fringe QB1, solid QB2. I think you're pretty happy here. Uh, Dolphins didn't play great, but they played well enough for fantasy to get at least a few floors in there and then a big one from Devon Achan. So good game from the Buffalo Bills and the Miami Dolphins. Uh, but that's going to do it for the YouTube version. If you guys want to check out the whole video, you guys got to become a member at thefantasyfellowship.com. That's where I'll be posting it and I'll also post this in the, in the Discord after. So check out thefantasyfellowship.com. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the Monday night football game. Peace. Got me feeling icy.